With all the changes that have happened to Facebook and Instagram ad targeting, are you curious about tips and tricks that will help you get the best results targeting real estate buyers and sellers? If so, this is the video for you to watch. I'm going to be sharing with you the tips, tricks, and strategies that will give you the best results targeting your real estate clients. Take a look. Hey everyone, Kevin Small with 2Q Lead Generation Strategies. If you are new to our channel, welcome. We are so glad you're here. What we're all about is helping real estate agents just like you generate more leads, set more appointments, and close more deals. Doing a lot of that primarily, primarily through social media. So if that is what you're interested in, please consider subscribing. We'd love to have you here as part of our community. Before I get going in today's video, just one quick note down below. What we have found is that there are four key elements for finding success marketing using social media. So we've put together a free training called the Four Pillars of Success. You'll find uh, more information about that down in the description below. It's totally free, so make sure you go check that out. It is time well spent. In today's video, what we're talking about is how to generate more results with Facebook ad targeting, how some tips and tricks, things that we use to get the best results. So if uh, you are unfamiliar with Facebook ad targeting, I'm not going to be going, or Facebook ads in general, I'm not going to be going over everything. I'm just going to be focused on the targeting section. And uh, so that's going to be the, the focus point of today's video. So let me go ahead and share my screen and we will walk through some things. So if you're unfamiliar, this is the Facebook ads manager. When you're setting up ads, uh, this is kind of what it looks like and kind of what you can expect. So basically when uh, you are running ads in the real estate or mortgage industry, there's this category right here called special ad categories. And so you'll notice there's, uh, as of right now, the time of recording this video, there's four different categories. So if you're in the mortgage area, you're going to be checking this one for credit. If you're in the real estate section, you're going to be checking this one for housing. The reason why this matters is there are certain industries that are regulated for anti-discriminatory uh, advertising practices. Real estate, mortgages, both of those are industries where there are anti-discrimination policies. And, uh, and so... There was, to make a long story short, Facebook Facebook got sued by a lot of people for anti-discriminatory practices, and this is what they've developed um, as a way of being in compliance with those uh, discriminatory uh, rules. So when you select credit or housing, a lot of the targeting options that would normally be available are no longer available. So when we get to the audience section where we're determining who it is that we want to target, because I have checked the box for housing, you'll notice that I cannot change the age, right? See how everything's grayed out and it says unavailable when running ads in this special ad category. So I can't target people based on any of the protected statuses, age, gender, uh, ethnicity, nationality, um, a lot of those. So um, with that, uh, a lot of questions come up. How do we target people to get the best results, especially when we're running real estate ads? So let me kind of walk you through some of the tips and tricks and ways that uh, we go about doing it that um, have proven to give us the best results. So when this first area here for locations, when you go to do location, you used to be able to do like a neighborhood or a one mile radius or put in an address. Um, now the default is a 15 mile radius. So you'll notice if I, like I live in Logan, so if I put in Logan, Utah and click on that, you'll notice that it's defaulting to a 15 mile radius around the city. For whatever reason, Facebook has determined that 15 miles is a non-discriminatory um, area. So uh, that's what they've done. Now I can increase that up to 50 miles, but 15 is the minimum, right? So that works like that. If uh, the county I live in is called Cache County, um, so if I put in Cache County, then I can target the entire county and Facebook doesn't view that as discriminatory. Right, so that is um, one way is you can mark it by county. You can also, um, you know, if you want to, let's say I don't want to do that, but 
since I did a 15 mile radius around the city I live in, what if that's not the area I really want to target? What if I want to be over here more? Well, that's what this drop pin option is. So I can click on drop pin. It gives me a little box like a check mark and I can put that where I want. And again, it will default to a 15 mile radius around that point. So people often ask, is there a way around getting, um, you know, is there a way getting around the 15 mile radius option? And the answer is yes, there is one way that I know of getting around that and uh, still getting your ad approved for real estate and mortgages. And the way that we do that is through this section called custom audiences. So what's required is let's say there's just a, a neighborhood you want to farm or a very small area. What it requires is you getting a list of those people and then we can upload that list as a custom audience and target that group of people. So that's the only way that I know of of getting around the 15 mile radius. If you are the one providing the list of people that you want to market to, then you aren't subject to the 15 mile uh, rule radius that Facebook has on uh, that they that they've implemented on their system so that would be the way that you get around that so again you would target whatever geography you want to target based on what makes the most sense for what you're doing and can't do anything about age can't do anything about gender what we can do are these two options so let me talk about languages first so we can target people based on the language that they speak and I have several clients who do this like I've got some clients that um, focus on marketing to the Hispanic market. So all the ads that they run are in Spanish. They target people that uh, speak Spanish, right? They would just use this option here. And that is what they use for targeting people. Now, from my experience, a lot of these demographics where, you know, it's people speaking specific languages, a lot of times they are under marketed to. So it creates a great opportunity. The people that I have that do this see great results just because frankly, there's not a lot of competition um, usually in most of those areas. So I've had people that have done it in other languages like Korean and um, Chinese and all kinds of things. So um, that is an option. And frankly, if you speak another language and cater to another, uh, another you know, population through language, it's a great way of just making sure you're getting in front of who you're, you're wanting to get after. So to kind of put that in perspective, you'll notice without that, you know, where I live, Cache County, you know, uh, population wise, there's not a lot of people up here. Um, you can see that here, but you'll notice if I switch, and I'm only targeting people that speak Spanish, you'll notice that that is a very targeted group of people, right? And so that, uh, again, it's one way of getting in front of who you want. The other option that's going to be applicable for most of you being able to target who you want is going to be this detailed targeting. So in the detailed targeting, this is where we can add demographics, interests, or behaviors. So a lot of times when I am targeting people um, like for example, if I'm going after potential buyer, real estate buyer clients, a lot of times the ones that I'm using are Zillow. So you want to make sure it's this one, the Zillow real estate and not the premier agent, because with the premier agent, this is where Zillow is selling leads to real estate agents. So if you use this option, you're going to be targeting real estate agents, not real estate potential buyers. So I would do this. Um, I would also use websites like realtor.com. Right, so you'll notice that option is there. Um, there's also Trulia. So there's different websites like that that you can go to. And the thought process is, if someone is interested in these different places, the likelihood of them being interested in, like say an ad that you're running about a listing to try and get potential buyers, that would make lots of sense, right? So those would be some great options. There are also options for people who are interested in a starter home or a first time buyer or if they're interested in a first time buyer grant. You saw that one pop up, right? So these would be things that I would use for targeting buyers or first time buyers. Now the way that this is currently set up is it says include people who match any of these. So think of this as or. People that are interested in this or this or this or this or this, right? So this is or kind of marketing. Now you can narrow your audience even more by using this option to narrow audience. So you'll notice when I do that, it says this 
and must match this. So let's say I was doing this and I want them to also be interested in, I don't know, I'll just type in home and we'll go with um, home construction. So I might do something like this if I've got somebody that I, if I'm running a campaign for potential, um, like a new construction, new development type of, of marketing. So that way I'm finding people that are interested in buying or real estate and specifically new construction. And so you'll notice that, let me show you this. When I've got this, you'll notice that my target market is 69 to 81,000 people just for the area that I'm focused on. When I narrow the audience and I go back and put in that home construction, you'll notice it shrinks the audience because I'm saying any of these categories here and this, they've got to be interested in all of that. So by narrowing the audience, it's a way of really getting focused on who it is that you're after. Um, how do I determine what I'm putting in here? Well, a lot of it comes down to the question. The question I'm really asking myself is the people that I'm interested in, what else are they interested in? Because with the detailed targeting, I'm not really able to use demographics. So I'm not able to put in like income earners like I used to be able to do a couple years ago, or whether they're renters or homeowners. Like I'm just not able to target people based on that kind of demographic information. So that is the question I'm asking myself. People that, I'm, people that I want to get in front of, what else are they interested in and how can I use that to target them? So like for example, with a lot of demographic um, studies that I've done, uh, people in the older demographic, so like 55 and up, a lot of times they're interested in things related to healthcare, to retirement, to um, uh, a lot of times local news pages uh, do really well. They're really well followed. And so people that are interested in the news, um, politics is another big one. Um, so I'm using those kinds of things to get in front of that older demographic, even though I can't target technically by age, right? I'm doing it by interest. Um, people in the younger demographic, like your first time buyers, a lot of times they're interested in things obviously like school, um, education, um, entertainment, restaurants, those kinds of things uh, tend to do very well with the younger population. So again, I'm just asking myself that question. And so you'll notice there's this option here that says browse. And it will give you the option of browsing interest based on different categories, right? So you can go through this list and find things that you do want to target people. So like here's a, a common one. If you're doing a lot of condominiums in your area, you can target people that are interested in condominiums, right? So there's all kinds of interests that you can find and you can just click on the browse to go through that and find ones that are relative to what it is that would make sense for you, right? When I'm targeting um, real estate sellers, uh, the question is what kind of interests do people have that imply that they own a home? So like, for example, I would target people that are interested in home improvement. Um, again, if people are interested in that, the likelihood of them owning a home is very, very high. People that are interested in um, home renovation. Um, did I spell that wrong? Uh, I guess they got rid of that one, home renovation. Oh, so home repair, home improvement. I would pick that one as well. Um, interior design is another one that I've used. Again, if they're interested in these kinds of things, the likelihood of them being interested or owning a home is very, very high. So this would be great targeting for targeting potential sellers, um, right? And then the other thing that's super helpful here is this suggestions button. So I can click on suggestions and get other options related to the ones that I've put in. So these are really um, a lot of the tricks of the trade that we use to get in front of the right people, whether it's real estate buyers or real estate sellers. Again, the question you really wanna ask yourself is the people that I want to be in front of, what else are they interested in? And the answer to that question is what we go about using to target 
the correct people. So those are just some quick tips and tricks to be able to use the targeting to maximum effectiveness of getting in front of the right real estate buyers and seller uh, potential clients. So if you found that helpful, take a split second, click that thumbs up button down below. We appreciate your, your help with that. It's just a signal to YouTube that the information we put out is valuable and uh, so they recommend it to others. So again, if we've helped you help us, click that button, we appreciate it. Also, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do so. Um, there's a subscribe button down below with a bell notification. If you click on the bell, you'll be notified every time we put out brand new content and we put out brand new videos like this, brand new tips and tricks uh, all the time. So make sure you go check that out. Uh, lastly, if you're curious about the services that we offer, the marketing services where we do it for you, uh, there is information down in the description below. So feel free to go check that out. Other than that, that's it. Make it a great week. Keep crushing it in your real estate business. As always, if we can help, let us know. Otherwise, we will see you on the next video. Take care.